Hello and welcome to Tech Deals, unboxing an overview of the Sound Blaster Z sound card and a discussion of various audio options for your computer in 2017. In just a few minutes, yes, I will take this out of the box and show you everything that you get, but the real purpose of doing this video is to talk about all of your audio choices in 2017. Most computers have built-in sound cards and have had built-in sound cards for a long time. You may be saying, why would I use anything else? Good question, maybe you shouldn't. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about external USB audio devices, add in PCI Express sound cards, full USB mixers, and the reasons why you might choose them. I'm also gonna talk about my sound situation, why I bought these, because I did buy these, and what I'm using them for. First of all, let me be very, very clear. For most of you, probably 90% of the people watching this video, the built-in sound in your computer is actually all that you need. If you just have $30 to $50 worth of speakers on your desk, you watch some YouTube videos, you listen to some streaming music, maybe you play a few games, the built-in sound is actually just fine. Where that changes is if you have very high quality speakers or headphones, and I'm talking about $100 plus speakers or headphones, or you record audio for a living, either in podcast audio form or for a video such as I do, then exploring your audio options may make sense. I'm going to discuss these options in order of price from lowest to highest. I've already mentioned the built-in sound. Let me offer the under $10 option. You can buy these USB audio devices for less than $10, I'll link to this and everything I'm discussing down in the video description below to all the various sites, but these are under $10 and they simply plug into a USB port on your computer and provide a headphone and microphone jack on the back. It's a very inexpensive analog to digital converter. They do work fine, no special drivers required. I have tested this. The sound quality is okay, it's not great. The primary use of something like this, in my opinion, is for failed audio. If the motherboard audio in your computer is either defective or staticky or simply does not work at all, you can buy this to plug in your speakers and you will get audio back on your computer. If you are recording audio for a living, if you have high-end sound, skip these. They work, but they're cheap and they're no better than the built-in audio, at least in my experience. Moving on from those, that brings us to the $35 to $55 options, including the Audiology RX series from Creative Labs. Yes, they still make Sound Blaster cards in 2017. If you're my age, you may remember the original AdLib, the Roland MT32, Pro Audio Spectrum, and of course, Sound Blaster cards from the late 80s and early 90s. Now, of course, back then, computers only had PC speakers, or at least PCs did. Amigas and Apples had better sound, but for the PC side, you had to add a sound card to get any kind of music or sound effects. The $35 version of this card is a 5.1 surround sound, and the $55 version is a 7.1 surround sound. It also has a couple more features, some more uh, inputs on the back. It's a full height card. The $35 version is a half height. The $35 version may very well meet all of your needs, but if you're buying a sound card to record audio for a podcast or YouTube videos, I would consider the $55 version to sort of be the minimum entry requirement if you're buying a PCI Express sound card. You get gold plated connectors and a few extra features, which are nice, and for an extra $20 if you're gonna put it in, step up to the 7.1. Now, for those of you curious, this is what you're actually listening to me on right now, or rather, my overhead shotgun microphone, which is an Audio-Technica $170 shotgun microphone, is on a boom arm overhead, and it is plugged into this card, which is why I can't do an unboxing of it, because this is physically installed in my Skylake X system right now. One of the reasons I'm making this video is I've gone on a journey to try to improve my audio quality, and one of the things I did was I got some extra sound cards, such as the USB device there and these, to see if I could improve my sound recording. Now, speaking of sound recording, this is a good point to take a quick pause and say there are other factors besides your sound card or audio device that's gonna control your sound quality. The room you're filming in makes a big, big difference. There is a flat wall on that side of the camera. There's a flat wall behind me. There are flat walls on either side and there's a flat ceiling overhead. I do not have foam padding on any of them and I probably need to. That's probably the next thing I need to do to get rid of any echo or reverberation in the room but this does sound better than the built-in sound card did. In fact, a video that I posted a few days ago, the MSI Z370 Crate Gaming Motherboard was filmed using the onboard audio of my motherboard. So if you want a simple example of the difference between this and the built-in sound, you can listen to that video and hear the difference. 
So if this is fun at 55, what is this? The Sound Blaster Z is a $90 sound card. It does have better signal to noise ratio. It does have more features than the $55 card does. This is going to stay here in my YouTube recording machine. This card is going into that machine back there, which if you follow my channel, is my $2,000 Cadillac build. It's an i7-8700K, and that is going to be my new Twitch live streaming machine, which is going downstairs. It's replacing an older i7-4790K. Now that has very nice built-in audio on the motherboard. However, I've had various issues, both positive and negative, with built-in audio, and I recently made Twitch Partner. Link to my Twitch account is down in the video description below. And since I'm now going to be able to be uh, making an income from live streaming, it's time to get a decent sound card. Truth be told, I could probably buy another one of these, but I also have a YouTube tech review channel, so buying a different model gives me a chance to take a look at both of them and then compare them. Now we'll get to the unboxing of that in just a minute, but I want to discuss two more options available. First of all, the microphone I'm using overhead is an analog microphone. It connects using an XLR cable. I've got a 48 volt phantom power supply under the desk, and then that actually runs into the back of the sound card. The other option you have is to go with something like a Blue Yeti microphone. Those are about $90 and they use a USB connection. Basically the digital to analog conversion occurs, or rather the analog to digital, occurs inside the microphone and it sends a digital signal direct to your computer. Truth be told, if I had the entire thing to do over again, I would be tempted to do that. I don't own a Blue Yeti and I've thought about buying one, but you know, at some point you end up with more microphones than you know what to do with. I already own these microphones, so I'm going with the sound cards. I could certainly mount the Blue Yeti overhead and then simply run the cable to a USB port, and that probably would provide just as good a sound as my current Audio-Technica microphone that's overhead. But since I already have that one, it is what it is. Now that is one option. The other option is to go to a full-blown external USB mixer to where the microphone, headphones, speakers, and everything plugs into an external full mixer with gain control and volume and balance controls. All the sound goes through it, and then that connects via USB to the computer. That is probably something I will eventually end up with, especially as a Twitch streamer. I know a lot of professional full-time Twitch streamers use external mixers. It's just something that I haven't gotten to yet, and if I do, then I will definitely make a video about it. Basic external USB mixers, at least the good ones that have been recommended to me by other people, are about $100. You can buy them for less, but the ones that have been recommended to me are about $100. But you can easily spend $400 to $1,000 on a really fancy mixer with a lot of different inputs. Very few people need such a device. The basic $100 units are all that most people need. Truthfully, if you add a $170 shotgun microphone plus a $100 external USB mixer, that suddenly makes the Blue Yeti microphones seem pretty reasonable which is probably why they're used by so many streamers. Although, do allow me to turn that argument on its head, because while a Blue Yeti microphone gives you a nice digital microphone, so the sound system of your computer is completely irrelevant because it's just digital sound going into your machine, that does nothing for your headphones or your nice surround sound speaker system. Coming back to these sound cards for a minute, if you have a nice 7.1 full surround sound system with front, side, rear, and subwoofer, well, you need something like this if you want to get the most out of it. Now, it's true that 7.1 audio is supported by a lot of onboard sound chips these days, but if you've spent two, $300 on a really high-end surround sound system, $50 to $90 for a sound card is really not that much, all things considered. So that's enough of the overview. Why don't we open this up and see what you get for your $90? Now, I can't open this up, of course, because I've already put that in the machine. No, I didn't film it. I probably should have. It has been a very long time since I've actually bought a sound card. I owned an original Sound Blaster card years and years ago. Skipped the Sound Blaster Pro, went to a Sound Blaster 16, skipped the AWE32, went to an AWE64, and to be completely honest, don't remember what happened after that. At some point, we all went to onboard sound. I probably had one or more sound cards after the AWE64, but if you're older like I am, you remember those days, and frankly, I remember them fondly, except for the price of those cards, which were kind of expensive at the time. And here you can see what's in the package. It's basically just a... Uh, foam type container with the sound card, a couple of cables, and then you have an instruction manual and driver CD over here. There are some twist ties on the back that you have to undo to get the card off because it is tied in nice and tight. 
They are quite serious about protecting this. And now you can see the sound card. Now, one nice thing about this, assuming you like the color red, is it is a much more attractive card with the shroud. It has a nice look to it than, say, the $55 card, which is basically just capacitors, a chip, and it's a simply a, a standard interface card. That assumes, of course, you like the red theme. If you don't, well, then maybe buy the less expensive one. On the back of the card, we have a full suite of gold-plated inputs and outputs, a uh, microphone jack here, headphone, and surround sound. And then there is an optical out and an optical in input in the back. If you're curious what the card looks like on this side, well, okay, this is just a black side. What's interesting because of how PCI Express cards are in your system, it's actually gonna be looking like this with the red side down in most people's computers. So you'll see some red here and black on the top with the red side actually facing down. All of these cards, the 35, 55, and $90 card, all have a plug here for the front panel audio connector. So your headphone and microphone jack on the front of your computer will plug into the card instead of the motherboard. One nice feature that the $90 sound card comes with that the other two do not is a beam forming microphone. This is a stereo microphone. It's got a pad on the bottom and a little clip here. You can put this on top of your monitor. If you're just recording audio or simply want a good microphone, you can use this and save yourself the cost of buying one. The other cards don't come with a microphone. So the extra cost of the $90 card may be completely justified by the microphone alone. It is a better sound card, but for most people, probably the other ones are good enough, unless you want the microphone, in which case it's a value. To summarize all this, for most of you, just use the built-in sound, it's fine. If you're thinking of going to an add-in sound card, consider your needs. Do you have high quality speakers? Does your current sound have a problem? Do you get a lot of crackling and static on your current sound? Do you perhaps have issues with older drivers or perhaps you have an older motherboard that's not well supported in Windows 10, for example? Maybe a new sound card will work very nicely. Speaking of drivers, let me say, when I installed the Audiology RX into my Skylake X system in Windows 10, I did have to install Creative Labs drivers. Windows 10 did not automatically install the drivers. No problem, the download was quick and easy. I'm also pleased to report that while it did put a small icon in my task tray, it's not obtrusive and I'm not noticing any performance difference. So it's not slowing down the system in any regard. They're very lightweight drivers. There are some extra options in the drivers that you don't get with the real tech audio that's built into motherboards. Some pitch shift control and some additional configuration of surround sound settings and other things, which are not not basically included with the Realtek cards. Now, I have not used this yet since I just unboxed it, but if you follow me on Twitch, you're gonna get a chance to, because I currently live stream using a built-in sound card, but I'm gonna install this in that computer back there and start live streaming with it, and I'll talk about it more during those streams. Having said all that, if I had the entire thing to do over again, would I still go the route that I did? Honestly, no. Downstairs, I have an Audio-Technica AT2035 microphone on a boom arm. I would have gotten a Blue Yeti microphone. I just simply wasn't aware of that as the right choice at the time I bought it, and I'm already invested in that solution, which is why I bought the sound card. If you currently don't own a microphone and all you want to do is Twitch stream, buy a Blue Yeti. Everything I've heard from people I've talked to says that that's probably a better choice for most people than going with a sound card and a separate microphone. Perhaps one of these days, I'll get a chance to try that out. Like this video if you like it, share it with your friends if you loved it. Remember to subscribe to my channel with that big huge red button directly below. Questions and comments in the comment section. And as always, links in the video description, link to Twitch to follow me over there, link to my Twitter and Patreon is down there as well. Links to Amazon and Newegg for everything discussed as well. If you found this video helpful and useful in any way, please use those links. They are affiliate links, they support the channel. If you wanna see me around in 2018, I would greatly appreciate your support. Thank you so much. I will see you in my next video.